So I think it's generally known that the coffee that you drink out of a coffee pod is not very good. That is awful. What is going on there? But it's not just that coffee served in these cute little pods is worse than brewing a dark roast through your old socks. These things are a part of a special class of terrible consumer products that a lot of people fail to understand. Back in the early 90s, a low-level marketing manager by the name of John Silva quit his job and started to work on a device where he could brew a single cup of coffee from a single plastic pod. An invention that he would famously go on to regret. John Sylvan is the man behind the K-Cup. In an interview in The Atlantic, he says the pods are expensive to use and he feels bad he ever invented them. This device would then ironically be named the Keurig, which comes from the Danish word for excellence. It's like people who name their dogs killer and they're like a chihuahua, but I guess like the opposite of that. This cute little pod would go on to change the way millions of people drink their coffee worldwide, create mountains of trash in landfills all over the world in the process and push Keurig to a billion dollar brand in the extremely competitive coffee industry. But while the invention of coffee pods themselves was groundbreaking, the marketing tactics that made it successful were not. See, most of Keurig's profits don't come from the Keurig devices themselves. In fact, a lot of their machines are actually sold at a loss. Rather, 90% of the money that they earn comes from those little pods. While this might seem precarious, it's actually a very good business model. This novelty brewing technique guaranteed the coffee drinkers would buy their specific products every time they realized they needed a refill. It is what is known as the razor blade business model, or the old bait and hook. This strategy was pioneered by Gillette, which makes its money by selling unreasonably priced razor blades, initially attracting customers with their really cheap handles, sometimes even giving them away for free. I actually have a whole video about this on my original channel where I talk about leaf shave, which is a zero waste way to shave that doesn't gouge you every time that you need to buy razor blades. But plenty of other companies do a variation of the exact same thing. Game console giants such as Microsoft make literally no money off the Xbox consoles, but instead make all their money off of the games that they sell. Service providers lure customers in with the latest smartphone given away at a discount, but you have to sign up for a huge data plan with a whole bunch of service fees and extra charges. Done well, this model can make a company extremely rich, but it does require a business to have some control over what can be used with their products. That's why for Keurig, things weren't looking so good when their patent expired in 2013. Suddenly, that meant that anyone who even knew what coffee was could start making <laughs> could start making pods for their coffee makers. Desperate to protect their hard-earned monopoly, Keurig turned to one of the most successful industries in the bait and hook game: printers. Like Keurig, printers are often sold very cheaply with the intentions of getting their customers hooked on their ink cartridges. They're notoriously expensive, low quality ink cartridges. But you can't just make terrible overpriced products, right? I mean, people will just go and buy something else. And printer companies knew this. So they found a way to create their own mini monopolies within the industry. This has probably happened to you. You've gone into the store to look for printer ink and you can't just buy whatever ink is best and cheapest or on sale. You're supposed to buy the specific ink for your specific printer and if you don't, it won't work. See, printer companies have gone out of their way to make sure that their printers only work with their brand of ink. Even going so far as to install microchips in the ink cartridges themselves that won't allow you to print anything off brand. There's a great video by Austin McConnell where he talks about exactly this and it is fascinating. Now inkjet printers have been readily available since the 70s. They really don't require any fancy microchip technology to work, but it's in the best interests of businesses like HP to continue developing increasingly complicated and enticing cartridge technology so that they have an excuse to first rack up their prices for new flashy features you don't need 
and two, somehow pretend that they can't use the other cartridges made by those other guys. <laughs> I mean, check this out. HP is going on and on about like their fancy infrared ink technology or something. And it's like, dudes, I don't care about what infrared laser beams you're using to print this stuff. I just need a packing slip. Like, relax. And this is where Keurig 2.0 comes in. Unlike earlier models, the 2.0 uses a secret patented technology so that only Keurig approved products work with the machines. You see the connection there? Do you see what we did? They're printers, but they're for coffee. Anyway, with this new update, basically anything that wasn't made by Keurig got this dreaded error message and basically you'd have to make your own coffee like a peasant. Imagine this for a second, like if you bought a vehicle and you could only use their specific type of fuel or like charging stations, like you would be totally bound to depend on them for everything and there would be no other way around it. Pfft. That would be crazy, right? Tesla. Now Keurig has since faced lawsuits for price fixing and anti-competitive conduct, blah, 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 blah. And they have just settled a $31 million suit over the issue. Fortunately for the little guys, like many a massive controlling empire, Keurig seems to have underestimated the cleverness of everyday people. Turns out the Keurig 2.0 uses infrared scanners to detect a special ink in their K-cups, not unlike those ink cartridges we talked about earlier. Before long, Keurig owners developed a simple hack to trick the scanner by using old K-cup labels, and some companies simply used similar ink in their own products to make them work. I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Unfortunately, many customers don't know to check the price of the ink or the coffee pods or the razors before they buy the thing. We get caught up in what looks like a super great deal, and when we do need a refill, we're stuck with this microchipped infrared bubble crap that most of us don't even really need. And this is the real problem, because it's not just Keurig that's doing this. All of the different pod companies and printer companies in all of these different industries have their own proprietary technology that make it impossible to use anything else but what they give you. They want you to be choiceless so that you're stuck with them no matter what. Now, even if you're not a printer owner or a coffee consumer, chances are you've been hooked into one of these razor blade schemes at some point in your life. Thankfully, there are often ways of getting around these sorts of things, whether that means buying a Keurig scanner or using those little reusable pods or buying a secondhand cell phone to avoid getting trapped in those fees. And to top it all off, these refill dependent business models are extremely wasteful. By making you dependent on their disposable products, you're not only stuck spending more money than you want to get subpar products, but you're also filling the landfills with junk every time that you want a cup of coffee. So if you're thinking about buying a Keurig for Christmas for you or yourself, just maybe don't. These things always go on sale around major holidays, and even if it looks like a great deal, it's not going to be a great deal for you down the road or whoever gets this thing and has to pay for all of those pods way into the future. But what do you think? Have you been caught up in one of these schemes before? Because surprisingly, when you start noticing them, they pop up everywhere. And of course, if you like this video, please remember to literally like it and consider subscribing to this channel if you wanna see more stuff like it. We're constantly trying to put out new and interesting and helpful content for you. So, uh, you know, we're just here hanging out if you wanna come join. 